Yo, what is up guys? Stellboy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hopefully you guys are doing well. If you're new here, smash that like, hit subscribe, all of that good stuff. So this video is a quick preview and prediction for Artur Batabiev versus Dmitry Bivol. This fight goes down on the 12th of October, takes place in the Kingdom Arena in Saudi Arabia, and of course this is a undisputed fight at light heavyweight. Dmitry Bivol is the WBA champion, whereas Baterbiev is the IBF, WBC, WBO and lineal light heavyweight champion. Of course, I don't need to sell this fight to you. It is one of the premier fights of the year, undisputed at light heavyweight, a premier division in boxing. Stylistically, this one should be interesting. I'm greatly looking forward to it. Um, and yeah, I guess we start with the tail of the tape. Artur Betabiev has a perfect record of 20 and 0, all 20 wins coming by way of knockout, 100% knockout ratio. Dmitry Bivol has a record of 23 and 0, 12 of those wins coming by way of knockout. Artur Betabiev is listed as 5 foot 11 and a half with a 73 inch reach, whereas Dmitry Bivol is listed as 6 foot with a 72 inch reach. So Bivol is half an inch taller. Baterbiev has an inch in reach, but in terms of like who is the bigger guy here, it's clearly Baterbiev. Bivol has talked about going to 168 throughout his career. He's not a massive light heavyweight, whereas Baterbiev is a pretty big light heavyweight. In in fact, you know he he's spoken about going to cruiserweight uh, at some point in his career. Of course, he also fought at heavyweight in the amateurs, fighting the likes of Alexander Usyk, for example. Um, so yeah, Baterbiev is the bigger guy here. He's got the size advantage, and he clearly has the power advantage. Both guys are orthodox fighters. In terms of age, Baterbiev is 39 years old, whereas Dmitry Bivol is 33 years old. So the youth definitely favours Bivol in this fight, and that could be his one, ad one main advantage outside of, like, the stylistic side of things. That is his main advantage in this fight. Baterbiev is close to 40. Long amateur career. And throughout the last few years, Baterbiev has been picking up injuries on a, on a quite regular basis. So, I think you do have to view this fight with that caveat. You know, could Baterbiev get old overnight? Could the wheels fall off? Of course it's possible. Of course it has to be considered... Um, but I try not to predict fights like that unless something is super obvious. But, you know, performance-wise, Paterbiev has looked good recently. Um, so, yeah, when I look at the tail of the tape, I think it favours Paterbiev in most aspects aside from youth, basically. Now, what do I believe each guy should do to win this fight? I'm going to start with Dimitri Bivol, who I believe is the underdog. Dimitri Bivol, for me, is a good mover, fights with a good rhythm... He's got a nice one-two, a one-two-one, can box very well on the outside, very, very good understanding of distance, doesn't usually overcommit or fall in with shots. Um, he maintains pretty good balance throughout a fight, can move going backwards, can move side to side. Decent foot speed, decent hand speed, decent athlete, okay power. Um, but overall, he's a he's a good outboxer, Dimitri Bivol, who can kind of shift into a... Uh, boxer puncher style but primarily he's been boxing as a boxer more more of a pure boxer more so than a boxer puncher and I think in this fight with Baterbiev he needs to merge the two I don't think he can take this fight on and kind of play that passive boxer point scoring type of fighter so for example the performance he put in against Canelo I don't think will be enough to deter Baterbiev from applying that pressure on the front foot. It could be enough to win him rounds, of course, but to do that for 12 against Paterbiev, who's going to make you work, who's going to land his own lever, I think eventually that would lead Dimitri Bivol from, uh, to getting broken down. Um, I think in this fight, Bivol needs to show us something he's not shown us throughout most of his career, and that is the willingness to sit down on some punches and really fire that straight right hand in particular, the lead uppercut, the left hook. Um, try to take advantage of Baterbiev's aggression and walk him onto big shots. I, I've got the assumption that Bivol probably hits harder than we think he does. 
Um, but the issue is, like I said, he doesn't really commit all that often. I think he needs to win this fight. Because, yeah, I mean, Bivol's boxer style has, you know, it's, it's seen him through so far in his career. But you look at the guys he's fought, man. He's not fought, he, he's not exactly fought a whole host of guys who have, like, crazy quick feet. Guys like Gilberto Ramirez, Saul Alvarez, Umar Salamov, Craig Richards, Jean Pascal, you know, Sullivan Barrera. These guys don't have the quickest feet. Bivol is able to outmaneuver, outmaneuver these guys. Keep him at the end of punches, dance around him. Um, he's very, he can very easily do that against guys who are stationary or flat-footed or slower foot. One big misconception people have of Baturbiev is he's like this basic, cumbersome, come-forward brawler. He can brawl, but he's not basic. And Baturbiev's foot speed is very underrated, in my opinion. So, so Bivol performing that kind of side-to-side backfoot style. I don't think it's going to, I don't think it's going to be as effective against Paterbiev because of Paterbiev's foot speed. Paterbiev's going to be closer to Bivol than his other opponents uh, when he fights in that style in my opinion and that's going to allow Paterbiev obviously to work to put on pressure and to tire out potentially Bivol more than he's been tired out. He's going to be working harder if he's ta- if if he's using that sort of style. So for me the imperative thing for for Dmitry Bivol in this fight he has to get Baturbiev's respect via uh, through power, through landing punches. If he doesn't, I don't think he can win this fight. Because I don't think he can box a picturesque 12-round fight and just outpoint Baturbiev without hurting him. I think he need I think he needs to domesticate Baturbiev. I think he needs to put some sort of doubt in his mind. And by doing that, he he's going to have to hold his feet sometimes really sit down on the straight right. Baturbiev is defensively lapsed at times. You know, sometimes he does come in with with his head on centre line, open for the straight, open for a lead uppercut. You know, Baturbiev does have a good guard. He can move his head when he wants to, but he's not consistent with it all the time. Bivol needs to try and take advantage and land, and land hard shots. Try to hurt Baturbiev, try to buzz him, try to sting him, try to drop him. Who knows, man, maybe even try to knock him out, but he needs to hurt Baturbiev. As far as I'm concerned, I'd primarily do it behind straight punches because that is Bivol's bread and butter. It is distance fighting. Um, he kind of fences right now with his style, but he needs to be um, he needs to be firing those hard jabs, those hard straight right hands, holding his feet a little bit more, and and trying to nail Baturbiev maybe coming in. I would say the lead the lead uppercut is also there, but you know it, it does give Baturbiev chance to to maybe counter that shot a bit more effectively and get closer more effectively, but um, I want to see Bivol use a boxer puncher style more in this fight, more so than being a pure boxer, because again, I don't think he can do that for 12 rounds against Paterbiev, I think you need more than that. Body work for Bivol could be interesting as well, I think he's got the scope again to maybe, to maybe shift some of those straight punches to the body, the jab, the straight right, I wouldn't try to hold your feet and trade to the body, like with hooks or uppercuts, but maybe try to snipe from the outside to the body, uh, you know, when he's boxing, when he's moving, try to try to change levels, you know, faint jab to the head, fire a straight right down to the body, um, faint jab to the head, jab to the body, jab to the chest, um, try to try to, try to to land those straight punches to the solar plexus, to the chest, to try and slow down Baturbiev, to tr- to try to slow down that pressure. Also, it's a really good way to offset your uh, offset the guy coming in, offset the guy trying to apply pressure. It's an effective way to make them reset. Also, so yeah, uh, body work is another area where Bivol could try to focus on, but he can't make it. Um, I don't think he should hook to the body, especially early on against Baturbiev. I don't think he should be going up close and hooking to the body and throwing short shots to the body. If you can, fire the straights to the body from the outside. Again, try to deplete that gas tank just a little bit. Um, try to slow him down. And again, if he's able to do that, then maybe more pure boxing is more viable as this fight plays out. If he tires out the Turbiev, maybe then the pure boxing becomes more more viable. But, you know, I don't think he should be doing that early on, just boxing defensively, boxing passive. Um, so I think, I think early on in this fight, Bevo... I think he needs to really rip up the script and not not like reinvent the wheel. 
I'm not saying he should go in there, become a brawler or just a pure power puncher, anything like that, but he needs to have those elements to his game, mainly the boxer, boxer puncher type of role and counter puncher type of role. Um, to again, just to try and get Baterbiev's respect. I keep on going back to that, but I don't see anybody beating Baterbiev in and around his division who can't get his respect because I don't think anybody has the skills to offset him other than getting his respect. Because skill for skill in this fight, again, there's this bias among boxing fans when a guy can move or when he fights in a manner in which is kind of back foot, kind of cautious. For whatever reason, boxing fans always defer to that guy as being more skilled. I don't think that's the case in this bout because Baterbiev has so many subtleties to his game. You know, aside from that overbearing aggression and power, he's got a lot of skills to go with it. And, you know, Bevel has to realise that it's not Joe Smith. It's not Jean Pascal. You know, Baterbiev has a rare skill in boxing, which is punching on the front foot. By the way, that could be a massive, massive factor in this fight. He's he uses he uses a technique called shifting. Um, so it's punching as you're coming forwards, basically, in a, in a very simple explanation. But that's extremely hard to carry out. Only only truly skilled fighters can carry that out effectively, and Baterbiev does that, which which brings me to an error that I see in Bivol's game. Not super frequent, but he does it enough which is where Bevo will back out, sometimes with his hands down, sometimes his head is there to be hit. And if you're, if you're doing that against a guy with quick feet, plus who can punch while moving forwards, you could see Bevo getting caught on the exit in this fight. Bevo's defense has to be a lot tighter on the exit when he's trying to spin out, when he's trying to get out, when he's trying to reset. Has to be a lot tighter, in my opinion. Um... But for me, the main thing for Bivol is to be more assertive. I'm not going to use the word aggressive. I'm going to use the word assertive. Throw more punches with power, essentially, to make it simple. As for Artu Abetabiev, for me, he needs to do what he always does. Come up in shape. Uh, come in there with intent, with aggression. Maybe a tighter guard than we're used to seeing. Um, you know, to try and mitigate some of those straight punches of Bivol, because primarily I'm assuming that's what he's going to be relying on, the 1-2, the 1-2-1, the jab, etc. Um, he's going to be leading with those shots. So a tighter guard from Baterbiev wouldn't go amiss, maybe fighting in a slight crouch, coming up with a jab, uh, trying to jab from under Bivol kind of thing, under his eye line. Um, but yeah, ultimately Baterbiev needs to be him. He needs to impose that superior um, physicality on Bebo. We know he's the bigger man, the heavier set man. And he needs to impose that by getting close to Bebo, right? Using those quick feet, using that technique known as shifting. And when he's close to uh, Bebo, obviously he has to work. You know, Bebo may try and clinch. I think that'll be bad for Bebo because Baterbiev is the stronger man. And even in the clinch, when Baterbiev's got a free hand, he can do a great deal of damage. I think Baterbiev getting to the clinch in this fight will, will favour him big time. I don't think Bivol can necessarily cope with him in the clinch. So the clinch is not a safe place for Bivol. It could be a beneficial place for Arto better be able to get some work off. Messy work, but effective work. Shifting, of course, is going to be important against a mover, against a, against a boxer like Bivol. We know Baterbiev shifts very well. And he kind of uses that one-to-one -one combination. Not not in the same way Kovalev used to, but um, but he uses that one-to-one -one in, a, in a quick shift very efficiently. Uh, and usually that discombobulates opponents. They'll back up in a straight line. They'll get they'll then become stationary on the ropes or in the corner. And Paterbiev can then go to work. Of course, in this fight, when there's a pressure guy against a mover, naturally the body is going to be a key target for Paterbiev. Try to slow down the legs of Bivol. Try to slow down that movement. Try to get him just a little bit more stationary. Um, so the body work of Baterbiev is going to be key. I was saying about Bivol's potential jab to the body or straight punches to the body. One of Baterbiev's most underrated shots is his jab to the body. Um, that could definitely be there for him in this fight with Bivol. Uh, obviously has to set that jab out early on. Has to be getting success with it. Then he can change it up, change levels, etc. Um, so yeah, the bodywork of Baterbiev, of course, 
Another area in which I'm kind of curious about, I'm not saying I want to necessarily see it from Baturbiev, but... Because Bivo, one thing about Bivo, he is a rhythmic fighter. He kind of has that, like, pendulum style. He is a rhythmic fighter, but one thing about rhythm, like, rhythm's not all the same. One thing about Bivo's rhythm, as, as good as it is to watch, as mesmerizing as it can be, it is pretty much the same thing over and over, right? I'd be very interested to see if Baturbiev can implement counters into his game. Um, countering Bivo, countering his movements, countering the patterns. Um, because counter punching doesn't just rely on... You don't just counter other people's punches. You counter their feints. You maybe counter uh, the bounce in their footwork. There's a whole host of ways you can counter somebody. And, and, the, thi and the thing is with Bivo's rhythm, it is pretty much the same and constant throughout a fight. In terms of punches to counter, Bivo hasn't really been made to pay with it. Although Malik Zanad was able to utilize this shot sometimes. Bivo's jab very often comes back to his kind of uh, chest area. Doesn't always bring it back to his chin. Uh, so the right hand counter of Baturbiev could be an effective counter punch here for him. But Baturbiev has underrated countering anyway. And I'll be interested to see if he could pull that off against a guy who has the reputation of being a better boxer. It wouldn't surprise me if he was able to pull it off. It really wouldn't. Um, but I think it would surprise a lot of people watching. So I think the countering of Viterbiev could actually be very pivotal in this fight for him. Um, I really do. Especially when Bivol opens up. Look at the count look at the combinations when Bivol opens up. He usually throws the same combination. Um like a slightly curved left hand followed by a slightly curved right hand. When he gets somebody going, or when he's feeling himself, he'll throw those same punches over and over and over. And again, it's open for the short right hand down the pipe. So yeah, I'm, I want to see Baturbiev try to implement counters also. But anyway, um, how do I see this fight going? I think this is a tale of a very good fighter going up against a great fighter. Baturbiev being the great fighter... Dimitri Bivol being the very good fighter. Age aside, that's the only caveat, the only reservation I have about this fight is age, of the age of Baturbiev. Aside from that, I'm pretty confident Baturbiev wins this fight, wins it pretty well. I'd say probably stops Bivol at some point in the second half of this bout. I'm going to go with a Baturbiev stoppage rounds 6-9. to nine. And I think it was a, it's going to surprise people, in my opinion, I could be totally wrong, but it's going to surprise people how, I don't want to say how easy this fight is for Baturbiev, because it won't be easy, but I think people are going to be surprised about how resounding it is. That's how I see this fight going, Baturbiev by stoppage. What about you guys? How do you see it going? Peace.